Hi folks, in this video we're going to build a simple LED flasher circuit on a piece of strip board, which is also known as Vero board. The circuit diagram for our circuit looks like this, but in order to build it on strip board we need to convert it into a layout diagram, and this will help us decide where we need to put all the different components on the board. If you'd like to see how to do that, click the link at the top of the screen to see how to design strip board layouts. Strip board comes in sheets like this. It's important to leave the wrapping on until you're ready to use it, as this will prevent the copper strips from oxidizing. If the copper does get oxidized, you can, however, just clean it off using some kind of abrasive material. We'll be putting the components in on this side, and then we'll be soldering the legs of the components onto the copper strips on this side. So next we need to cut a piece of strip board to build our circuit on. And if we look at the circuit diagram here, we can see that there are 19 holes uh, in terms of how wide the board is going to need to be. And then if we look down the other way, it's going to be about 14 holes down this way, or 14 strips. So we'll just mark out a piece of the board now, and then we'll cut it. Just one other thing to note as well is that although it looks like the copper strips on the board are actually on the side that's facing us. On this board, the copper strips that we can see here are actually on the underside of the board. So this image is almost as if the board is made of glass and you're seeing the copper strips on the back of it. So just that can be a bit confusing sometimes when people are new to using strip board. We put the components in on the side that has no copper strips. The copper strips are on the back, but just when we're using this program, it looks like the copper strips are on the front of the board. So we just need to count the number of dots across by the number of strips down, and then we should be ready to cut. So I've just counted 21 holes across, just to give me a little bit extra room, and then 15 down, just again, for a little bit of extra room. So we're just going to mark that now. There we go. So to cut the board, what we need to do is use a carpet knife or a box cutter. And then we need to score the board. We're going to cut across the copper tracks. Like that. Next, place the board on the edge of a table or something similar. And then what I'm going to do is just cover up the part of the board I'm not going to use with some card. Press down firmly on it and then it should just snap, like that. Make sure as well to always cut on the side with the copper strips, otherwise when you break the board like that the copper strips won't have been cut and they'll start peeling and it'll be very difficult to work with. So you should just be able to lift the board like that and it comes apart fairly easily. Next we'll do the other side. It's a little bit easier to score this time because we don't have to cut the copper tracks. Just put it into the groove and run it across a couple of times. And snap. There we go. We have the piece we need. If there's any little bits left over, you can always trim them off with a pair of snips. Make it nice and neat. There we go. Now that we have our piece of board, we just need to flip it over. This is the important part. Flip it over. And we're going to put the components in on the plastic side, not the copper side. Okay, so looking back at our layout diagram, the first part we want to put into the board is the 555 timer chip. Now actually, we're going to be putting a socket into the board first. And the reason for that is that if you want to change the chip. It's easy to do because you can just pull it out of the socket, but it also prevents heat damage from happening to the chip. Uh, rather than soldering the chip directly in, you're just soldering in a socket. And you can see here, the chip is shown as being semi-transparent on this diagram, and underneath it you can see these circles. And these circles are where we would use uh, a little cutter like a drill bit, 3mm drill bit, or a track cutter to remove the connection between both sides of the chip. We don't want to have the different legs of the chip being connected together. So if we didn't cut those copper strips, that would be the case. They would be short-circuited. So we need to grind away 
the copper strips just in those locations there. But we'll do that a little bit later on. So for now, we're just going to position the chip. And if we look, we count across nine. So nine holes across, and then one, two, three, four, five uh, down. And that's where we're going to position our chip. So we're just going to count across by nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's here. And then five down. One, two, three, four, five. So this one here. So now we just get the chip socket. And you notice with these chip sockets that they have a little notch cut out of them. And this corresponds to where pin number one is going to go. So I'm going to put this in here like this. And then just to stop it from coming falling out, I'm just going to put a piece of tape across it like this. Okay, so now it's held in place. And when we turn it over, we can see, just about see, the pin sticking out on the other side. Okay, so before we start soldering, just have a quick look at some of the equipment you might find useful. So the first one is kind of important. This is a soldering iron. So you just want one, say about 25 to 30 watt soldering iron, nothing too fancy, but one with a nice uh, small tip on it because it's going to be working with, you know, fairly small components. So it's that. Then obviously a stand to keep it in. And then in the stand, you're going to want to have some uh, either a damp kitchen towel or sponge just to clean your soldering iron off. Then uh, another alternative is instead of using that, you can actually use a little Brillo pad and just use that to clean the tip of the soldering iron. So you should have a nice clean tip on it, nice and shiny. Then another useful item is a solder sucker and we use this to remove unwanted solder. So say if you want to remove a part of from the board, you can just heat the solder up and then it just sucks it off the board. And another useful tool then is this, which is the track cutter. So we use this to cut the tracks. Obviously you're going to need some solder as well. So I'm just using 1.2 millimeter, uh, 60, 40 uh, leaded solder. I find leaded solder easier to work with, but you can use unleaded, but it is a little bit more difficult to work with. Okay, so before we start soldering, it's worth having a look here at the technique for how to solder onto strip board. So if we look at this board here, we can see we have a couple of components put in. So this is an LED, and this is a resistor. These little brown rectangles here, these are the strips. This is representing the strips. And then obviously these components are pushed into the board from the underside, and the pins are sticking out the top. The resistor has been soldered in, so you can see that there's a little blob of solder here on both of the legs of the resistor. So if we wanted to solder in the LED, the first thing we need to do is bring the soldering iron up so that it's touching both the leg of the LED and also the copper track at the same time. And you can see we've just placed a little bit of solder on the end of the soldering iron, just a small amount. We bring the soldering iron down so that it touches both the track and the leg of the component at the same time, thereby heating both of the different parts. Then we bring in some solder wire and we touch the solder wire off of the pin and the track at the same time and it should melt in such a way that it sort of goes like this. So this is what you want, a nice gently sloped, like a little mountain, um, flowing from the pin down onto the copper track. Okay, and this here is an example of what it actually looks like um, on a real uh, board that has just been soldered. So a nice gently sloping sort of flow uh, and also we can see that it's joined on nicely onto the pin here. There's no little gaps between the pin and the solder and it also flows gently here and also very importantly that the solder doesn't flow onto uh, either of the tracks on either side of it. Okay so that's really important. If some solder does end up going uh, across onto a neighboring track. You can remove it. First of all, you might use the solder sucker to remove any excess solder. And then when you've only a small bit of solder left on the board, what you can do is you can gently run the soldering iron up and down this groove here. And it will actually separate. So the solder will stick to the two separate tracks, but not to the plastic bit in the middle. Make sure that the solder you're using contains Rosen flux. 
what this does is it helps to clean the copper as you're soldering onto it and make sure that the solder will stick properly. It's very hard to solder without using um, flux in your soldering. Okay, so let's start soldering. I've placed the strip board into a little soldering stand and I have it set so that it's completely level. This is really important. If it's not level, the solder may kind of flow downhill, if you want to call it that, and that can cause problems. So make sure it's very level and securely held by the crocodile clips. Next I'm going to get the soldering iron and because it's been sitting in the stand for a little while you can see the tip has kind of gone grey so we need to just clean it. So I'm just going to bring over the stand here and I'm just going to clean the soldering iron like that. And we should have a nice silvery tip now. Okay so before I do anything else I'm just going to apply a tiny little bit of solder to that. Okay and now I have that there and what I want to do then is I'm going to bring this so that the sort of flatter edge is touching the pin of the chip holder and also the copper track. So I'm just holding it like that and then I bring some solder in from this side. There we go, that's done. Okay, so that's the first joint. It can take a little while to get the hang of things, so it might be worth practicing on a spare piece of strip board and maybe with a couple of things like resistors first, just to get the hang of it. I'm just going to do the rest of the uh, pins now. If you want to check your work afterwards, you can always bring in a little magnifying glass and have a close look just to make sure that none of them are touching and it looks like they're all okay. Also looks like none of them have any dry joints, so that's good. It can be a good idea to check as you're going along to make sure that there are no short circuits. In other words, tracks that are joined together that shouldn't be. So one way to do that is just to get your multimeter and set it to the uh, continuity setting. Okay, and when you have it in the continuity setting, when you press the probes together, it makes a little beep sound. So what we're doing here is we can check then to see if any of our tracks are connected. So if I connect to the first one and the second one, no beeps. Then I connect to the next two, no beeps. Next two, no beeps. So that's good. There's no, there's no short circuits between them. Now's a good time to uh, cut those tracks using the track cutter. So I'm just going to hold the board steady and then just place the track cutter into one of the little holes and we just turn it a few times until it grinds away enough of the copper to remove it. We don't have to uh, go all the way through the board. That wouldn't be good. Okay, all we want to do is just to remove the copper track itself. So it usually doesn't take too long. Okay, and that one looks like it's done. Let's just uh, we'll zoom in a little bit. Yeah, we can see that the uh, the copper track is now gone. So I'm just going to do the rest. Now we'll just take a little look. I'll bring it up a little bit closer. Yeah, you can see that we've properly cut the copper. So there's no join from one side to the other. Okay, so the next component we're going to put in is one of these little KSP2222A transistors. So I'm just going to cut that one out. And then we're just going to remove it from its packaging. You can just usually pull these like that. Now what's nice about these is that the legs are already spaced out to the right uh, distance, which matches up with the pinholes on the board. 
which is 0.1 of an inch. And so we just have to position this the correct way. So in this case, it's going to be going in here. And the funny thing is with these kinds of transistors, sometimes the flat side faces this way and sometimes faces the other way, depending on which way the collector base and emitter are located. But they're not always the same, so you need to check the data sheets whenever doing that. So again, just to make sure that it's held in security, we're just going to put some tape on it. And then we can flip over the board. Once again, make sure you have a nice clean soldering iron. Okay, and then just put a little tiny bit of solder on it. And then we're going to bring it in from the side. And apply it down like that. Same again with the next leg. And the last one. There we go. It's really important to clean the tip as often as you can, okay? Because it gets oxidized really quickly. So usually in between every joint, unless I'm doing just a few small ones close together in a row, I'll tend to clean it. Okay, it's a nice clean tip like that. So next we have the LED. Okay, so whenever you're using an LED, just a couple of things. The long leg is the positive one, short leg is the negative one. You can also check because when you turn the LED like that, you can see that there's a flat edge right here. And that flat edge corresponds to the negative side of the LED. Okay, so short leg, flat edge, negative side. So the negative side will be going closest to ground. And in our particular board, it's going to be going in right here. And again, the pins are spaced exactly the right distance apart to match these holes. So again, clean soldering iron, a little bit of solder, touch the track and the pin together, there we go, same with this one, there we go. Next we have the 330 ohm resistor, so I'm just going to pop that in here and in here. Next we have a 1K resistor connected between the base of the transistor and pin number 3 on the 555. So we'll just need to make this a little bit narrower. Okay, so we have pin 3 here, so 1, 2, 3. And we're going to pop that in right here. And then the base of the transistor. So that should fit about like that. So for some of the next connections, we're going to need to use some 22 AWG, that's American wire grade uh, hookup wire that we can use. Um, and I'm just going to cut this into different pieces. Although I'm not going to use red, I'm going to use blue. So first, I'm just going to strip the end of this blue wire here. So to do that, I'm just going to use my snips. You could use a cable cutter, but I'm just going to use this. So this is just a pair of snips and what I'm doing is I'm holding it like this so that I have a little bit of control over it. Okay, so I put my thumb here and I'm using my fingers like that and that gives me enough control so I don't end up cutting the wire. So then I just want to strip off a little bit so I gently squeeze and then just pull and eventually just get it off. There we go. Okay, so there it is stripped. And uh, what I'm going to do next is just bend it. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to use a pair of uh, long nose pliers, like that. And then what I want to do is measure roughly how much I'm going to need. So in this case, we're going to be going from here down to pin three. So we really don't need too much, about this much here. And then I'm going to need to strip off a little bit on the end there. So I'm just going to cut this now. And then I'll strip off the remaining piece. Instead of using the snips, I'm going to actually cut it. So Let's go straighten it out again, and I'm going to use my trusty box cutter again, 
and I'm going to position this about here. Now being very careful because it's a sharp blade, just gently rotating it along there just to score it enough. And then I'm just going to pull that off like that. And now we have the second part. So I didn't just fold that up using the long those pliers. And then we should be able to position it into place. There we go. Now I'll just speed up the video while I put in the rest. Now that's almost everything, so I'm just going to put some tape across these and then solder them in. One or two more components after that, but that's about it. It's very important to make sure that the legs of all the components that are coming up through the board are very straight. Okay, If you leave them lying at an angle it can make it much harder to solder because the solder can tend to flow in the wrong direction then. It's also very important not to leave the soldering iron touching the copper tracks for too long because if you leave it too long they'll get too hot and they can actually melt off the board which can be a bit of a nightmare. Okay, so I've zoomed in a little bit on the board. I've just finished doing the soldering, but there's one or two little problems. You can just see here, I'm just going to point with the soldering iron, you can see there's a joint here that's not fully finished. The solder is not making contact with the pin. And there's also one that is potentially bad uh, just here, where you can see a little black outline around the pin itself. So it just needs to be reheated. So I'm just going to fix those two now. So again, clean the old soldering iron. A little bit of solder on it and then I'm going to come in here for this one and now that one's fixed and then I'm just going to reheat this one that should be fine now I'm just going to check the board for short circuits one more time 
So I'm going to put the multimeter on to continuity and then I'm going to test each of these. Now in this particular case I actually have an LED here so there should be some form of continuity but, but it won't beep because it still has to pass through the LED. But I'm just going to check the other ones. So no beep so far, that's good. No beeps. No beeps. They're looking good. The beep is just the probes touching each other. One thing to be careful for as well is that your crocodile clips don't short pins because that'll give you a false reading. Okay, so it's all good. Now you can also use the continuity setting to test your LEDs. So I'm just going to put the positive leg of the probe on the positive pin of the LED and then the negative leg of the or lead of the probe to the negative of the LED and you can see a little bit of light shines through it. So that means that we know that that LED is okay. So it's just a handy thing for testing LEDs in the future. Now here's a piece of strip board where we have two separate pairs of tracks and the first pair if we test them at the probes it's fine there's no beeps. Okay but if we move to the next pair you can see that we get a beep and that means that they're joined together. Basically the current flows from one track to the other through this piece of solder so that's not something we want. So it can be a little bit difficult to get rid of but I'll show you how to do it now. Okay to, so to fix this problem first of all we need to get a clean soldering iron so just make sure we've cleaned it off and then we're going to add a little tiny bit of solder to the tip. That might seem a little odd because if we want to remove solder why would we be adding more but it just helps to make a connection with the existing solder already on the board. So what we do then is we get our solder pump and we just press it down like that and then we heat the solder on the board and when it turns to liquid we then suck it up with the solder pump. Okay and what happens with the solder pump is you can see that it's sucked out the solder and it's already solidified in it. Okay, so now we can take a closer look at the board. And you can see that that did a pretty good job of, of separating those two tracks. Let's just check out the probes. Yep, no beeps, so that's great. So let's say that they're still crossing over. What you can do sometimes is just separate the tracks by running the hot soldering iron in between them like this. Now it's not as good as using a solder sucker, but it does manage to separate them. It doesn't matter if there's a bit of solder on these tracks, um, as long as it's not joining the two tracks together. Now if you accidentally cut the wrong track and you need to repair it, it's not too hard to do. Okay, so this is an example of a track that's been cut. All we need to do is get a piece of wire like this, and then what we're going to do is we're going to tin that wire. So tinning it means that we're going to be applying some solder to it to make it stick more easily. Okay, so I have some solder here and I'm just going to again apply the solder to the soldering iron and then I'm going to heat up the piece of wire. So I'm heating up the wire with the soldering iron. Okay, and in doing so then I'm going to touch it off the solder metal. And what that does is it applies a little layer of solder onto the wire itself. Now this will make it stick a lot easier onto the board. Then we just apply a little bit of solder to the tracks. And then we get our piece of wire that we tinned. And we should be able to put it in position. There we go. We've now bridged the gap. Then we just snip off the end and that's a repair. So there's just a couple more components to solder in. So the first one I'm going to put in is this capacitor here. It's an electrolytic capacitor and I'm just going to fit it in here. It should fit nicely in. And it's very important to make sure that when you're putting these in that the side with the stripe, as in this part here, faces to where your ground is going to be. Okay, so if I just take it out again you can see that one of the legs is longer, just like our LED. The long leg is the positive, the short leg is the negative, and this is the side that has to go to ground. It's very important to put this in the right way around, because if you don't they sometimes can explode. 
And then the last component other than the chip is just a battery connector. So this just comes with a couple of wires. So the red wire is positive. And I'm just going to bend them down like that. Bend the other one down. And then we put them into the board like that. So one for the positive and one for ground or the negative. So I'll just tape them down and solder them in. Now at this stage it would make sense to snip off all the excess uh, leaves, so I'm just going to start trimming them now. Just leave the transistor ones on for a minute in case I need to take it out again. Okay. Okay, so the last component to put in is the chip. It's a 555 timer. And when you get these out of their packaging, sometimes you'll find that the legs are spread a little bit too far apart. So it's uh, useful to just get the chip put it down on the bench and just squeeze it slightly so that the legs are now kind of more in line and that'll help you fit it into the socket better okay so when putting in the chip just make sure that you line up the notch on the top of the chip with the notch on the socket and then just place it in carefully making sure that all of the pins we're going into the holes before you push it down firmly. Okay, and then it's in place. Now the next thing to do is connect up our battery and test our circuit to see if it works. So we're getting a light coming on, but that doesn't look quite right. It should be flashing. So there must be some kind of problem with the circuit. Okay, so we just disconnect the power again and we'll have a look. So I actually spotted the problem problem is just here we have this wire here should be connected to pin one on the chip and it's actually just the row above it it should be in the one below so there's the problem so no worries all we have to do is just take it out and move it a little bit so what we need to do is just again apply a little bit of solder to the soldering iron then we need to get our solder sucker with the solder sucker we'll just prepare it and then we need to reheat this bit of solder right here on this track and then use the solder sucker to remove it now we might have to do it a couple of times before we've removed enough solder so i'm just going to heat it up again yeah. still another time to go Finally starting to get enough solder taken away. Now sometimes there may still be a little bit of solder joining on to the pin and it may be difficult to just pull it out directly. So what you can do is you can just turn the board over until you can see the other side. Like this. And then you can grab the particular wire you want to take out using something like a long nose pliers. So I'm going to grab it right here. And then we just heat the joint again. And there we go, it comes out, comes out much more easily. Now while I'm at it, I'm also going to take out the other end of the wire because uh, just in case it's made it more brittle doing that. So I'm just going to heat up this joint and the wire comes out really easily. So now I'll just put in a new wire and that should fix that. 
So now let's try connecting it up again and see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to connect the power. And we have a flashing, or at least the LED turns on, turns off, turns on, turns off. So there we go, it's working. Okay, it's slightly different to the version I had shown you in the beginning of the video, which had a faster flash rate. And that's just because we replaced the 10 microfarad capacitor with a 220 microfarad capacitor. That takes longer to charge, so ultimately that means that the output of the 555 is going to be slower. So you're going to have a longer pulse time and a longer off time as well. Okay, so just a couple more troubleshooting tips. So if you find that your 555 timer is getting hot, then that's a definite sign of something wrong. Usually it could be caused by a short circuit between some of the pins, or possibly you might have the 555 in the wrong way around. Uh, another thing you can check is your transistors. Now the circuit has to be off to test this, but usually if you set your multi multimeter to the diode setting and you connect the positive lead of your meter to the base and the negative lead to the emitter, you should get a reading, something like that, 762, or sometimes it's a 0.8 or some other value, but something like that depends on the transistor that you're dealing with. If you get a value like a 1, that means that there's no connection at all, and if you get um, a beep, that means there's a short, and that, so either of those would be in your transistors, most likely dead, but you, so you should be getting, you know, a reading of some kind of number, you know, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, uh, that kind of value, uh, like we're getting here, we're getting 0 0.761, okay? And one other thing we can test then is we can test the resistors to make sure that they're okay. So if we set our multimeter to resistance, that's the omega symbol, and set it to a value higher than any of the resistors you're expecting to find on the board, so 20k in this case, and then we can measure the resistance by putting our probes at either side of the resistor. Now this has 0.32, but this is 0.32 of a kilo ohm, which is 320 ohms, which is close enough to 330 ohms. Resistors are never 100% accurate. So then this one here, we should be getting one kilo ohm, and we're getting 0.98 of a kilo ohm, so that's pretty good. Then we have this one here, which is uh, 1k again, so we're getting, we're getting, let me just check it again, we're getting 0.99, and then this one here should be 10 kilo ohms, but because it's got a capacitor connected up to it. Uh, it takes a little while for it to get up to the full 10, but uh, looks like we're getting the right value here. Okay. So here you can see the finished circuit looks pretty much the same as the diagram. Okay, folks, so here's a quick look at the circuit diagram again, in case you want to build a circuit yourself. And also you can change the capacitor for smaller or larger value, depending on how fast you want it to flash. And then, just a couple of safety items. So always make sure to wash your hands after handling solder because it contains lead. And uh, if you're going to eat a sandwich afterwards, uh, it could come off your hands and go into your food. So always make sure to wash your hands. Secondly, make sure the room you're in is well ventilated when soldering, as the fumes from solder um, come from the uh, solder flux, which can cause occupational asthma if you breathe it in on a regular basis. So always make sure that the room is well ventilated. Next, never turn the voltage on your power supply up too high because that could cause your circuit to uh, go on fire. Uh, also, ensure components like capacitors are inserted correctly because if they're in the wrong way around, they can sometimes pop or explode. Soldering irons are also very hot, so make sure to use a stand when using them. And remember that you know they may be hot, so always hold them by the handle. Don't be in in tempted to pick them up by the metal part. Another thing that's useful is to wear safety glasses when soldering and testing circuits, just in case you get some solder in your eye or in case a piece of wire uh, flies into your eye when you're cutting it. Be careful with sharp blades as well. And also check tools like your power supply and soldering iron before you use them in case the cables are frayed or the component itself is faulty. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.